My name is Jason. And my name is David. And this is a comic strip AP of Dungeon World, featuring the story of Domenico Castafiel. And when we last saw Domenico, he had just finished a negotiation with Mog to get her help with Lady Francesa when he discovered that the little boy who guards the entrance to the Black Nest uh, has followed him to Mog's Hogs. And you had just turned invisible and were going to uh, sneak up on the boy, right? And I know Mog was interested in you possibly um, uh, killing him so she could have his body to sell. Yeah, I don't know if I'll go quite that far, but we'll see how the situation progresses. Okay, well, so what do you do? All right, so I've just stepped out of the boy's view, turned invisible, and grabbed something heavy. Let's say it's a hammer, just to be perfectly clear on a visual here yeah sure um and is the boy just standing at the window still or what is he doing yeah he's kind of standing just outside the like just outside the stoop of the shop and like he's clearly trying to hide behind like a pillar or something right or or like some kind of just some kind of like you know obstruction like a sign pole or something and and trying to peek inside okay i will go out another way out the back way or something and circle around. Okay. You can do that. Oh, while you're back there, um, what do you see out back that is evidence of what Mog's profession is? Yeah, there's a, uh, there's a fripper back there and he's stealing all of the clothes that she has abandoned, uh, so that he can sell them. Oh, like Uh, the clothes from the bodies that she sells. Yeah. Uh, and he, he, he kind of gives a strange look as the door opens, but nothing seems to happen, and then the door closes. Yeah, uh, just a normal normal day in the Black Nest, right? <laughs> Doors opening and closing by themselves, no big deal. Yeah, I think he, he does. he's not even like proper Black Nest. He's just like a normal fripperer, but he knows that he can get clothes here, so. Okay, so you go around. Uh, then what? All right, so I make my way around, and I'm like closing in on the boy. Is he reacting? Does he seem to know anything or is he just still at ten- very very tensely like staring through the glass uh do it a certain realities for me eight uh okay go ahead and ask one question from the list what here's not what it appears to be you asked before if the boy was just kind of intently staring into the window and in fact he is um and maybe you're kind of focused on his eyes you know and you can see his eyes kind of just like set in place staring straight ahead into the window as you get a little closer, you see that his eyes are, um, they're glowing slightly, like a sort of faint violet color. And you can even see like little tiny wisps of purple miasma, like coming out of his tear ducts, and, like racing up the sides of the sides of his temples. Oh, uh, that's not what we want to see. How close is he to the door of Mogs? Mm, maybe just like uh, like across the little street there, like maybe ten paces. <sighs> yeah, I might mean I might might need a Mogs help with him after all if, if he's got some kind of enchantment on him. I'm gonna do what I set out to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna clock him and then quickly try and bundle him into Mogs. So are you taking any special precautions knowing that he's under some kind of enchantment? Before, I was just going to bundle him in. But now that I know that he's enchanted, I want him to try and knock him unconscious. Ah, I see. Um, With that in mind, I think you can take the plus one forward from DR. Um, And just give me like a... I mean, you're invisible, so you kind of have the jump on him here. I guess the only danger is if someone sees it happen, maybe. I don't think you're in any danger of stopping the boy, right? I think that's easy enough because you're invisible. If anyone saw it, would they really Would they really care? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, I'll let you just, I'll let you have it. Just describe how it goes. We see it from the perspective of the poor fripperer as he's pushing his cart full of cloth from around the corner. He sees a boy leaning out from around a corner who then his head bounces uh, off of the pole that he was leaning against and then slumps, but seems to, like, weakened at Bernie's, like, dangle for a minute. And then his feet drag quickly across the ground toward Moggs, and the door opens, it goes 
the, the feet get pulled in and the door closes. And then behind the fripperer, you hear, what are you looking at? <laughs> nice. Okay, good. Let's fast forward a little bit. So I guess you probably just like haul the boy on top of Mog's work table, right? Yeah, we push the T aside and pull him up on there. And uh, like probably, I think I, I take the precaution to tie him down because I know like something's going on with his enchantment. Sure, sure. Um, and you did have him bundled up, right? Just to be clear, like he was covered up as you put him up there. Yeah. All right. Well, so what do you do? Uh, so after we tie him up and take the uh, the bag off of his head or whatever, we kind of wait for him to come around, and I'm like looking at Mog, and I, I relate to her that there's something strange about him. He has a glow in his eyes that is not natural. And in fact, you don't have to wait too long. Um, maybe just shortly after you say that, you see the boy's mouth open uh, of its own accord. He's still unconscious. His eyes are still closed, at least. But his mouth opens up, and you hear kind of coming out of his throat. Like, it's a vocalization, but it doesn't really sound like him, at least what you remember him sounding like. It sounds a little bit more like... And there's, and the boy begins to appear, he appears to belch out this purple miasma, although he's not really making any kind of like bodily convulsions. It's just sort of coming out in belches out of his mouth. This purple miasma that's starting to sort of worm its way um, through the room to Mog who herself being charmed right now is a little slow in the uptake, right? She's a little, she's a little, a little foggy in the head because of your own um, enchantments. You can see this little miasma working its way toward Mog though. What do you do? Uh, I stuff the bag inside the boy's mouth. Do a defy danger with intelligence for quick thinking. All right. Got a 12. Uh, nice. I'll let you have that. Um, it, it probably just goes off just as you've just as you've described it. You you know you stuff the bag into the boy's mouth very quickly. Um, then what? Um, and then I like wave my hands to dissipate the purple miasma, and I'm like, Mog, you're on my side in this. Be be, be careful with with this creature. I've I've I think I know what we have here. I don't have a name for it, but I've seen one before. I think she turns her head when you say that to her and looks a little apprehensive and a little like she doesn't quite know what's going on, but also very, very intrigued. This is turning out to be a much more interesting day than she originally thought it would be. Uh, Mog, do you know anything about little demons that look like maggots that try and crawl down your throat? And she smiles and says, I can't say that I do, but I'm certainly willing to explore the possibilities. Well, you are about to learn probably more than you wish you had known. She's like, oh, really? Really? Uh... I tell you what, um, uh, you can have whatever caused that. In oh, I'm just take that. Um, hold up. Ah, fuck it. No, I'm done. <laughs> 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 uh, I hated my approach there. I'm starting over. Um, hi, this is Jason from the Gauntlet Gaming Community. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP please consider supporting The Gauntlet on Patreon. Our page can be found at patreon.com forward slash gauntlet.